Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus cares for me. Jesus cares for. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Heavenly Father, once more, as we shall be sharing the thoughts in your words, may the Holy Spirit expound on the meaning of your word in our hearts and in our minds so that we get impressed by your will. And Father, may you create in, our, in us new hearts and new minds that will be readily happy to do your will. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Beloved, today I want us to talk on hope in the time of crisis. That will be the title for this discourse. And what I want us to understand with this topic is that we should understand what it means to be cursed with a curse, as it is found in Malachi 3, verse 9. Now, the New King James Version reads, Ye are cursed with a curse for ye have robbed me even this whole nation now i want us to understand the contrast here that these words are spoken by malachi the words that says you are cursed with a curse and these words, they appear as a reminder to the nation of Israel, a reminder of a reason why they are fruitless, a reason why they are actually oppressed and pressurized by a crisis that threatens them with extinction. Now, these words 
are used by malaki and malaki the word malaki is derived from the hebrew root word mala and that word mala means to be full now the name malak uh, it's from the hebrew and then it means an angel or a messenger but if it's malaki then it will be a messenger or an, or an angel who is full or fully filled with blessings to bless his people so he's a messenger that brings uh, blessings now when you look at it the greek uh, equivalent for a messenger it's mesos now it means one who accompanies and normally like if i send you let's say i am sent in other words i imbibe the weight and as i go the weight is with me and because it is not my weight i accompany the weight when i begin to speak it i tell you of something that is in me that i accompany it to you therefore we we'll understand that the word uh, uh, malachi then if it means an angel or one who is deputizing another or a messenger then the greek equivalent mesos will be uh, correct to say is the one who accompanies uh, the weight now when you look at that then you realize that the hebrew when it speaks of this uh, accompaniment or a messenger it then goes to revelation 14 6 to 12 where the three angels fly in the mist now that word in the mist mesos like they are messengers of heaven or they are accompanied by heaven in their proclamation now when we go back to our text we find that in malachi 3 verse 9 then the angel the angel that accompanies israel is actually crying or is actually lamenting the position of israel and he's saying to them you as the whole nation you are cursed with a curse now the reason is why because you have robbed me in tithes and in offerings now when we look at that this angel that accompanies israel is the angel that had accompanied israel from egypt to canaan or we can say is the guardian angel of israel but we know the guardian angel of israel is not gabriel or whosoever because in um, deuteronomy 32 when we read verse 8 and 9 it says the lord had given different uh, portions of land to the sons of adam but he had given israel to himself so in other words he's the champion of israel or the guardian angel of israel if i were to put it that way now if you look at it exodus 23 verse 20 to 23 it says behold i send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which i have prepared beware of him and obey his voice provoke him not now i want us to get this provoke him not in other words don't provoke this angel uh, for he will not pardon thee uh, he, he he will not pardon thee and what will happen he says um, because my name is in him now the name there uh, when name is used it's shem in hebrew now it means character my character is in him in other words provoke him not for he will not pardon thee of 
your transgressions for my name, my character is in him, Shem. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do uh, that all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thy enemies and I will be an adversary unto thy adversaries. Therefore, we see that the angel who speaks in Malachi 3 verse 9 is the same angel that had been a guardian angel or a champion angel or a, a keeper of Israel. And then he cries, he laments over the backwardness of Israel to say, look, you have actually regressed. Now, when you look at it, when Israel was delivered from Egypt, uh, then you go to Exodus chapter 12, verse 17. The Lord says he is the one who took Israel out of Egypt with their armies. In other words, Israel, as it moved out of Egypt, it moved out every one of the 12 tribes being a regiment, an army that was prepared to inflict judgment on the Canaanites or an army that was prepared to do the work of the final days of the inhabitants of Canaan. Just like the church of God, the church of the Laodiceans, the last day church, is the church that should be prepared by heaven to inflict or to give the final judgment to the inhabitants of the earth. That is why there's correlation between this text of Malachi 3, 9 and Revelation uh, 14, 6 to 12. And now this lament of what will cause the delay and the, the failure of the nation or the failure of the last day church is that you are cursed with a curse because you have robbed me. Now, being cursed with a curse, when you look at it, this angel crieth out because of the fruitlessness of Israel. In other words, Israel is failing to be fruitful, to be progressive, to, 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 to advance in the mission in which it was called. It is, it is recorded, uh, it, in other words, this cry, it's recorded as the loud cry of the angel of the Lord pleading with Israel to remove the cause of their apostasy or the cause of their fruitlessness. The phrase cursed with a curse indicates the spiritual accompaniment of Israel as being a different host of angels different from what it was in the beginning. In other words, Israel is no longer associated with a progressive host. A host. Israel has apostatized and fallen into the domain or the hands of the host that actually takes them backward and actually thrives that God must annihilate them, must totally destroy them or remove them from his plans. Now this angel mourns and when it mourns, it mourns because when Israel was removed from Egypt, the Lord had reversed by that act their slavery from them being slaves to being liberated, to being free and redeemed and filled with abundance. In other words, you can look at it that when they left Egypt, they were working as slaves and so they were not earning anything. But the Lord said, tell the Egyptians to give you, to loan you. To... And the Egyptians gave them silver and gold to an extent that when they were in the wilderness, building the tabernacle, the, the Bible said when Moses said, bring all the items of the cloth or linen or silver or gold, they brought in abundance until he said, stop. In other words, they were so mightily blessed during their liberation that they could give without counting what they give. They, they could give or lend 
without being worried of how will I survive the next day because the Lord had proved he's a mighty provider. Now when you look at that, then he says, the host, the angel that delivered you had reversed your circumstances of slavery in Egypt so that you may be a free nation. But now you have actually angered that angel. You have actually offended or provoked that angel with your apostasies so that now this provocation is leading to you being downgraded, to you being surrounded by enemies without a mediator, you being surrounded by enemies without divine intervention. Why? Because you have sold yourself again into slavery by another nations. So in this time of crisis, when you cry out for help without help, when you cry out for help without hope of being helped, you must know there is hope in the time of crisis. And for you to be uh, received back into this hope or to live with this hope, you must honor your covenant with God. And that covenant is, you must not rob me with the tithes and the offerings. Because if you do that, then you will be sold to a curse. You will be bound to a curse. But this is not a curse. It's you are cursed with a curse. In other words, it's a double curse. You will become like a, a final product. Product. In other words, when the body excretes uh, like sweat or all the end products, it will not use them again unless it wants to perish. Now, when you do that, then Israel, the Lord says, you will be excommunicated. You will be taken out, counted as done. Because why? You are no longer of use to the body. Now, that is being cursed with a curse. You are now, the, you are, you deserve to be taken out of the system. Now, when you look at that, this is what the angel is saying to Israel. Now, when you look at that, he said, but if you obey my voice, Uri, I will be what? An enemy of your enemies and an adversary of your adversaries. Now, at this point, we must understand that there's a difference between an enemy and an adversary. An enemy is somebody who hates you. An enemy is somebody who wants to cause you pain. An enemy does not love you. But an adversary, an adversary in Tswana Kimohaneti, in other words, it's somebody who refuses that you must receive your blessings. So somebody who stands on the way between you and the blessings that you must receive. Now you must understand that all men are blessed in Jesus. But it is not all men who will receive their blessings. Why? Because the adversary knows what should come your way. But he comes to disturb or to interrupt or to make it a point that you don't receive those blessings. So you see now, that is an adversary. He's refusing, not with your blessings, but he's refusing that you receive your blessings. In other words, when God extends his hand, he wants to block the channel so that you don't receive the blessings that are yours. And that way he's an adversary. I don't know whether it's more than your enemy, but he's not your enemy because when you read in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil. It doesn't say your enemy, the devil. Your adversary, the devil. In other words, an enemy is shallow-minded. He deals with what he can see now. But your adversary sees you in the future. In other words, Joseph's brothers were not his enemies, but they were his adversaries. They were contending, contending that he doesn't reach that which God had placed for him. So then they don't have hatred. An adversary does not have hatred. 
like an enemy, but he has envy. You see, somebody can hate you and not know you, what you are becoming, or what you, in other words, the consequences of what you receive. But an adversary knows the consequences. Should you receive this, you are out. And now he blocks that channel. Now that is why I said the devil is not our enemy. The devil is our adversary. In other words, he works so hard with passion so that we don't receive that which the Lord had blessed uh, for us. Now it goes with Genesis 4, verse 6 to 7, when God speaks with Cain. After Cain had failed in his offering, the Lord said, Cain, why are you downcast? Why is your countenance fallen? Um, be careful. Sin is like at the door, lurking behind you. He wants to get you so that you serve his desires. But he says what? You can resist him and rule over him. Now, he doesn't say and rule over it, but rule over him. In other words, there was an adversary. There was somebody who knew what Cain or who Cain is in the eyes of God. And by the way, if you look at chapter 4 of the book of Genesis, when Eve says, now I have gotten myself a man. Genesis chapter 4, I think verse 1, 2. So now I have gotten myself a man and he called his name Cain. So the, now a man and Cain there. The word Cain also means a redeemer. So the devil knew what Cain should be. And the, chapter 4, 6, 7 said, he, he, but he did not want that. He wanted Cain to serve his desires, sinful desires. And what did he do? The, the Bible says, resist him. But what did Cain do? Cain worked together with the devil. And in working together with the devil, what did he do? He slayed his brother Abel. Now, in chapter in chapter 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 9, he said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now, when you resist him, it says, resist him in faith. The ninja just say resist him. Resist him in faith. In other words, you don't just say no, 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 no and become stubborn. But use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. For faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And, and, and Paul says in the armor, put on the armor of the spirit, he says the word of God is the sword of the spirit. I think it's chapter 6 verse 17 of the book of Ephesians. Now, when you look at that, by this phrase then, uh, you are cursed with a curse, the angel is actually telling us what it means to be cursed with a curse. And actually, this phrase was first used in Genesis chapter uh, 4. Genesis chapter 4, I think verse 11 and verse 12. When the Lord said to Cain, you are cursed from the earth. Now, when you look at it in Hebrew, it's like you are cursed with a curse from the earth. In other words, you, uh, when, when you look at that, the word used there in Hebrew is ra, and it means cursed with a curse, a double curse. Now, it is important to understand that um, Cain, by this phrase, the Lord meant you have partnered with those who have received the blood of your brother uh, from the ground. Now, what does that mean? In other words, you are cursed with a curse. It doesn't say, look, it puts it this way. You are now associated with those from the ground who have received the blood of your brother Abel. Now, that is why then the issue of stewardship, the issue of tithes and offering, it's not a question of a person's convenience or inconvenience. 
but it's a question of a person's belonging and recognizing the powers with whom a person is associated. So now, Cain, after slaying Abel and failing to resist the devil in fulfilling his desires, what did he do? He rather joined with those that are in the ground that have received the blood of his brother Abel. Now that is Genesis 3 verse 5. When you look at Genesis 3 verse 5, say, you shall not die. The day you go to the ground, you will be like the gods. So it's a deep thing. But when you look at that, you look at Jude chapter 1, verse 11, we are told that we must not be like Cain. What did Cain do? Cain, who in his way, in other words, Balaam went. You know Balaam, the one who cast, uh, cast a spell on Israel? But Balaam, every time, even up to the book of Revelation, we are warned that we must not accept the doctrine of Balaam. Now, Balaam followed the way of Cain. When you look at Jude chapter 1, uh, verse 11. So, when you look at the way of Cain, then the way of Cain, it will be like Cain joined, Genesis 3 verse 5, the gods underground, the Elohim. And now when you look at that, the gods underground are the angels that had fallen. And the angels that had fallen were happy for the blood of Adam. Why? Because when you look at Le uh, Leviticus 17 verse 4, so the, the life, the, the blood, the, no, Leviticus 11, uh, 17 verse 11, the, the life of the uh, flesh is in the blood. Now, uh, Leviticus 17 verse 4, the blood should be uh, offered to God for the life of all flesh belongs to God. Now, when you look at it, you find that the blood has all the uh, features that, in other words, let's say you do paternity test. You don't take the finger, you don't take the nail or the hair. You take the blood samples because the blood summarizes what a human being is. In other words, the blood captures the identity of an individual. So, in whose image you are made. In other words, if I say, is this my child? I go for the blood test. For the blood will reveal the truth about the pin codes of who's, who made this individual. So, in other words, when Cain shed the blood of Adam, those in the ground were happy to receive his blood because now they will manipulate the life of Abel to substitute it the way they want it. And how is the way they want it? Genesis 3 verse 5, you shall not surely die. So that is why then Cain and Balaam are in the same light. Therefore Cain became what? The seed of the devil instead of him being the redeemer. In other words, instead of him living to his calling, what did he do? He joined the forces of evil. Now, when you look at that, this is what the angel in Revelation, in Malachi 3 verse 9 speaks of. He says, you Israel, you were fetched to be a chosen nation, a holy priesthood, but you have chosen to partner with wickedness. And how is that? You are robbing me of my tithes and of my offerings. Now, why? Because this are a money, it's like blood. It's a summary of how you live your life. So if you earn it, you earn it because you spend your life in a particular way that has brought fruits. Now, life belongs to God in as much as blood belonged to God. It is actually, we are an outworking of his will. Whether we know it or we don't know it, whether we recognize it or we don't recognize it, whatever we do is an expression of the outworking of the power of God in us. 
So when you look at it, then Cain uh, provoked an angel that was a keeper of the human race. In other words, it's like this. When he slayed Abel, the angel that kept the human race, that kept the, the church, looked in abhorrence on how wickedness has acted. And actually they could have said at that time, they cried to God to say, God, let us avenge this blood. Now, the target was not Cain. Cain was introducing what a hidden host, what a hidden army, a fallen army wanted to do in the world. And Cain was just a good uh, person who uh, accepted the challenge to introduce this wickedness. So in other words, Cain hastened the time of what? Of the destruction or the time of the end of the great controversy. And God said, no, it's not yet time. That is why he said the blood of Abel crieth and it will cry for revenge until the end of time. Now, Abel, in his innocence, represented Christ. When Christ died, the angels, we are told, hid their face, could not look at the cruelty that men uh, uh, put on Christ. And actually, they could have said, let us finish the great controversy now. But the Lord said, no, it's not yet time. The time for the harvest is not yet. Let him die. So you see, when people are ill-treated, when people die in the presence of God, before we could feel the pain, the angels that watch over us grieve and mourn at the consequences of sin on the human race. It's just like when your house burns, the house will burn and feel the pain of fire, but the owner will be more devastated than the house because he knows what he has invested in that house. That way then you can understand the pain that the Lord has when any one of us falls ill or dies or is like lost into wickedness. It, we as humans, we participate in feeling the pain, but the one who is pained the more, who is grieved the more, is the angel that watches over that soul, that laments the wastefulness that comes on God's assets. And therefore we understand that the day of vengeance will come. So our hope then is that we should be removed from this case, separated from this insult that the devil is casting on us so that we turn into nothingness. And the only way out is the way of obedience to the word of the angel of Malachi 3, verse 9. Then we can go to 10 to 13 or to 12. We will understand that tithing, therefore, it's not a matter of our convenience. It's a principle that we must understand. And because why? It demonstrates to which side do we offer support. That is why it says, if Caesar goes to a war with his army, you give the tithes. You give the donations. Now, what about if God goes to war with his army? He also needs the support. And therefore, if God be God, give to him what belongs to him. And if Caesar, Caesar's war is necessary, give to Caesar what belongs to him. At the end of the day, then our allegiance is proved on which side we fight of the battle. And this is proved by Malachi 3 verse 9 and verse 10 and that being cursed with a curse it's like 17.4 Leviticus we are removed from what? from the fellowship of, of the brethren in as much as Cain was removed from the uh, land where they stayed and he became a vagabond then we should be careful not to be spiritual vagabonds in the house of God by the way we treat the issues of tithes and offerings. May God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen.